What's going on, everybody? It's Childish. We're back at it again with part two of the Educate and Dominate Operation Mid-Game Guild War Edition video. If you guys didn't tune in uh, yesterday, it's been so long, right? Uh, we had ourselves Mr. Beastrix. He is here then, and he is here now once again. How's it going, sir? It's going well. Thank yeah. you for asking. How are yeah. you? I am good. Uh, I'm, I'm still laughing a little bit as uh, we just got done. We just got done starting the new recording of this video, and apparently I forgot to click the uh, the the start recording button. So epic fail, but it's all good. Uh, it wasn't too far in, but now we're gonna go ahead and do this part two for you guys. So uh, after making fun of myself, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. If you guys didn't catch uh, yesterday's video, we talked about. Uh, tons of stuff when it comes to the important usage of certain uh, 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 runes in the game, some underrated uh, and overlooked runes, as well as some of the common mistakes we make when it comes to that mid-game uh, Guild War meta, uh, as well as a ton of different units that you can incorporate in, uh, as far as three-star units, common units, uh, that you can utilize uh, to counter what you see in the meta today. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is take all those units that we have and then start to try to create compositions to counter a couple of different teams that we see. We're going to have a couple of pictures that we showcase here um, uh, as far as certain teams that we generally see in the Guardian, Guardian 2 and even sometimes Guardian 3 ranks that you can kind of prepare for here. So without further ado, Beasters, let's get started right here. We got ourselves a, uh, what is this called? Eladrio Theo Chasun composition. Uh, you see, you see these people uh, coming at this with time and time and again. Where uh, you know a lot of people are utilizing those those yellow comps, and now people are creating compositions that allow them to revive and recuperate, so that they can uh, you know basically take that first turn and then you know finish off with a kill. What's your take on this team, and how would you go about countering it? The thing is, a lot of people try to uh, copper the Eladriel, and you can build the Eladriel for anti copper. So in that you can you can have it as a, as a trap. You can have the RNG damage from uh, Theomars uh, boosted up with uh, Chasun's uh, attack buff and, and uh, every now and then get a, a, a D-spell from, uh, from Eladriel. So, yeah, it, it's a decent defense. Uh, you need uh, Theomars to both be tanky and uh, to deal a bit of damage. So it has high relatively high uh, runer requirements, but at the same time, it does have a solid counter against it. Gotcha. So let's talk about that counter. What 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 is the way that you would take this one down? Uh, if I did go in with copper, for example, uh, if that Eladriel is a trap, I lose. So in my mind, what I need to do is bruise it, because if I bruise it, the... If they have will, that doesn't matter. If I, if they uh, have high defense on the lateral, that doesn't matter. So I go in with uh, Emma, uh, Tractor, and Ragion. But for, for most people uh, who doesn't have uh, an Emma, they can go in with Talk, uh, who will do the job just just as good in this case. Uh, and you have destroy sets on Tractor, and if you choose to, you can have it on Ragion as well. Uh, and you have will runes on uh, the healer and and uh, Ragion in order to protect yourself from the first turn if they get it uh, defense break, and uh, and you can use Grago also instead of Ragion, but Ragion does have uh, uh, well, he can revenge proc on Theomars and stun him through that, so it helps. Mm -hmm. Right on, and that's the cool thing about this team here. Um, is that, you know, they, they literally, and this is something that you've seen, we've seen in Conquer, like arena defense as well. They literally set up a team that is revolved around one rune. So even though this may seem, this may seem scary to some of you guys, if you are ultimately locking down the Theomar by means of, you know, stun procs or whatever, when it comes to the tractor, ragged or whatnot, you know, they really can't do anything. You know, Eladrio can sit there and revive all day, but if you're destroying its HP, um, there's really nothing you could do. And if I remember correctly, even if you're destroying their HP, even if he revives them back, he's revived with that destroyed HP. Am I correct there? Yes, you are. Okay. So that's the one thing to consider, guys. Yeah. Uh, you basically just give them turn if they get it. And after that, you are tanky enough to take whatever they throw at you and you keep stun locking or have defense buff up in order to take uh, the hits. You stun lock, destroy the HP of TMRs, and once it's uh, dead and have relatively low uh, uh, HP left after the, the destroy runes, then 
they won't do anything. You're, it's just about grinding it out, getting the destroyer on Ladriel or Chasun in order to to uh, to take them down. Mm-hmm. So, because it isn't like arena where you have uh, a set amount of time that's very low, uh, and you need to speed clear it, you can you can take your time and take it down with destroyer runes. It's safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. All right, let's move on to this next one here. Uh, again, Beastrix is providing us the. <laughs> this is not his defense, obviously. He's just creating a couple compositions for us here. Um, this one is something that I've seen upwards G1, G2, G3. It just depends on who's lucky enough to have certain units. But ultimately, Galleon or Rhine are more common units that people utilize, and then they pair it with some kind of a, a damage in the unit. But, but the popular one in the G3 ranks is Proto Hair. So, with the course of this particular composition, um, your pros and cons about it? As well as how well, you counter it. It does have a, a speed lead, uh, which helps Orion move first. Uh, Orion moves, you remove something. Uh, if it re- removes a will rune, uh, and Galeon moves and gets that defense break off, and tuck buff for uh, Perna, you hope for uh, death by crazy Perna. Uh, and and uh, what you can do uh, to counter that is to use Armeda. Uh, Armada and two water units will force Perna over on Armada and you get that 50% uh, uh, damage reduction because the others are water and they won't touch Armada. Uh, both because Galeon and Orion in this case is water and because uh, the two uh, units you bring along is uh, water. Uh, in my experience, uh, for those who need easy to Relatively easy to get, don't want to offend those who still haven't gotten their Theomars. Uh, but uh, you can use Theomars, uh, Konamiya, and uh, Ermeda uh, in order to take it down and have full control. Mm-hmm. But again, here it comes in with why you need to have some uh, defense on your Ermeda. Uh, because if you don't have any defense on it, then the Perna can go enough times to kill you. Yeah. And it seems like Perna's always... Uh, it, it, it's like... It's like Perna has that that run run skill set from from Orion. It seems like he's violent proccing all the time. It seems like he crits any time yeah. he all the time. It's ridiculous here. So right on. Anyone running this kind of defense needs to know that you can't only have Perna as a damage dealer. You kind of need to have Galeon deal damage as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't have it have it super squishy, but you can't have it uh, to do nothing uh, apart from buffing and debuffing because. Right. People can enter it with uh, the team I, I talked about and uh, just take it out. Um, so when you attack that kind of defense, I prefer to uh, kill uh, the Galeon first because it's the only um, only damage dealer that you can't have uh, tanking uh, with a tanky unit. And Konamiya can provide you with that. You can use uh, Theomar's defense break uh, with, uh, with the second skill the Galeon, and then use Kuna, Konamiya to resurge and kill it with the second uh, hit. Right. And from there on out, you just uh, use Konamiya to cleanse and heal up Armida and kill the others as you see fit. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Let's take a look at the next composition here. Uh, oh, yeah. This is definitely one that we've seen so, so long. A lot of us still use this um, as it has been recommended. You know, if you don't have the perfect... You know, Guild War defense with all of the rare units and whatnot, you know, but you're ruining your offensive units as strong as possible here. You know, play around with those offensive units, you know, in this situation here and see if you can let RNG do the work for you. I think you have a different perspective on this particular kind of composition when it comes to defenses. Why or why not do you like this type of defense? I think it's horrible. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is... Uh... If your defense doesn't have any tankiness in order to uh, survive, uh, well, anything, then you need to deal that damage that is enough to turn uh, the battle into your favor. In that case, you have no strip, so anything with relatively decent tankiness and uh, and uh, a pair of a set of will runes will win every single time. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're literally banking on Theo just to go crazy with Viron Fox, and obviously that does not happen every single time. Yeah, if you if you have wheel runes and someone who can't be defense broken like Tractor, you'll mm-hmm. you'll win every time. Mm-hmm. Right on here. So, um, so uh, your your top position, you're saying bringing, you're just bringing like a triple world team, and and what was you? You said Tractor there. 
Yeah, for example, tractor. If it's a Teomars, I can go. Uh, well, I'm lucky enough to have Ariel, but if you don't have Ariel, you can use uh, Talk, for example, uh, with Will Runes and Tractor with a set of Shield Runes if you want to be sure that you get that extra bit of survival, but it's not really needed. Uh, as, as long as you build up, up that, uh, ba- that defense on your monster and uh, that max HP, then uh, you'll be good. Gotcha. And what and what's the third one that you paired with like a tall contractor here? Well, it, it comes down to what the last one is. You can use Grago, you can use Ragion, you can use well anything. You can use another damage dealer. You can use some immunity monster. You can use whatever. Really, gotcha. All right. uh, it, it, it depends really on on what the third one is. But in the end, if you have the wheel runes, you'll win. Alrighty, sounds good. I like it. Uh, next one up here, the Orion. Chasun X, where X is their number one kind of damage dealer here. We see Theomars in this spot. We see Perna a lot in this spot. Um, we see a quite quite a few units in this spot here. Uh, you know, what's your take on this particular composition, and how do you go about countering? Uh, it's a bit of the same, really. Like uh, in that in that example, you have same weakness as with uh, the Galleon, Orion, uh, Perna one, because uh, you can still just tank it with an Armida and take it down with Konami and Theomars. And on the other hand, if you have a, a Theomars there, you can use a Ramahan, uh, the Windu Nagami, which we talked about, which is good to pair with uh, with Immacity, which again was the, a Hall of Heroes monster some time ago. Mm-hmm. And get that extra speed lead, which makes it so that if you're in proximity to each other uh, run-wise, then you get to go first, you boost up uh, Boost up uh, copper, copper nukes Chasun. Chasun is out of the way, and uh, you have uh, have uh, Ramahan, uh, Pop and Zur on Theo Mars, and after that it's uh, GG. Yep, and one thing to mention here uh, this is a common mistake for people that you do utilize in this defensive setup here. Uh, you know, when you're climbing up in the game, right, a lot of people have the struggle of, of you know, making. They're always looking to right improve their defense, whether we're talking about Arena or Guild Wars. And if you're somebody out there that's mid game, you're generally speaking, you're trying to do you're trying to do everything, right? You're trying to have the, your best defense, you're trying to have your best offense, Guild War defense, so on and so forth. And so when it comes to Orion, a lot of people like to utilize it in that swift format, trying to get that first turn. If they decide to have some, you know, kind of crossover, cross pollination, utilize this unit. Uh, in this uh, Guild War defensive side, I see time and time and again people using that Swift Rune or that Swift Orion um, with the Chasun that has a relatively decent amount of speed, maybe anywhere in the 170 to 200 range. But then whatever damage dealer they're using, uh, whether it's Theo or Perna, it is not speed synced um, to those two particular support units here. So for some of you guys who are trying to use this one here to try to get the first turn and get that perfect scenario for Theomars to go ahead and you know go ham whatever if you have that speed gap you're going to have yourself a, a couple of issues ultimately we're talking about ways of how to bruiser it so we're going to be relatively slow it's not going to make too much of a point but just to kind of point it out there for some of you guys that are struggling uh, on the defensive side and and they're having some issues and you're like why isn't this doing as good as my guildies that is has the same team and is getting more wins or whatever like that you know take a look at your runes take a look at those speed gaps there what do you think yeah, absolutely. There's uh, great guides, uh, one in particular about speed tuning uh, that is on Reddit. Uh, I'm sure you can link to it in, in the description below, uh, uh, which I think everyone should go through. But remember that uh, when you speed tune things, don't only look at uh, what the monster uh, monster window show you. Also remember that you have a, a speed tower, which should be your priority to, to get max because if you don't have it, you're basically behind everyone else. Uh, and uh, include that with the base speed and uh, and whatever speed lead you do uh, and calculate through that to find the final numbers. Um, so, yeah. Right on. It's, oh. it's something I see a lot of people miss uh, using, for example, Perna and Orion. Uh, Perna has 109 base speed, while Orion, I think, has 106 and yeah, it creates a small difference uh, when you add fifteen uh, percent from a, a max speed uh, tower, and uh, say you use a galleon with twenty-four extra percent speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it, it matters right on. Uh, for the final say, even if they look like they are both on a two hundred speed uh, 
uh, on paper. That's not reality. Right, right. Cool. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, next one here, definitely another common team out there. Um, we got the Theo Hodam Chisun. But now, uh, with the, with the surge of popularity here, if if Hodam's not in there, um, Kumun kind of uh, Kumun Kumun kind of fits the bill, running that leader spot, providing that speed, uh, that way of support by means of his passive, um, and of course the hit point disturb as well as a decent damage multiplier on that second skill. So let's talk about this team a little bit here. What do you like? What do you don't like? As far as how do you go about countering it? With uh, Hualam, it becomes basically the same as everything else. When I look at the defense, I think, uh, does this have a tactical weakness within nuking, uh, like with uh, with copper, a bulldozer, uh, or something like that, or uh, does it has have a weakness against bruising with with uh, tractor, uh, talc, and monsters like that. In this case, it goes for the same as uh, one of the one, uh, the defenses we talked about earlier, uh, the Eladriel, uh, Theomars, uh, Chasun one. Uh, basically, it's just Theomars is the danger, and all you need to do is lock him down, uh, destroy his HP, and then chip away at them until uh, the Hwadam is, uh, is uh, killable, and after that, you won. So, because you're going in with it with a lot of uh, of uh, defense and and a lot of HP, you'll be able to take whatever hits they they uh, grant out. And because Ragion and and Grogo in this case uh, has uh, has uh, self buffing immunity, you'll have immunity up almost all the time. Uh, against this particular defense, you'll uh, need to have a bit higher uh, survivability on your healer, as they will be the ones. Uh, uh, who can lose the game for you uh, mm -hmm. if Theomars goes ham uh, the turn they r run around without a uh, defense buff. Yeah. So uh, uh, those who want to see my Emma can see that on the previous uh, video. I've uh, gone and put a lot of defense on it in order to make it tanky and with its own uh, resistance lead uh, I uh, end up on 100% uh, resistance. You can also use the Sarian to just uh, uh, t uh, remove the shield part of uh, Kamun's uh, passive and and uh, then go on on uh, on Theomars, remove the Endure chance to, to block with Oblivion and and take him down uh, through again the same way uh, with Bruising. But that means you need uh, a well balanced uh, rune set on your Thessarion mm -hmm. in order to use him with, uh, with, uh, for example, uh, Talk and uh, Tractor. Gotcha. Uh, another alternative would be, uh, uh, well, just going the same way as before with, uh, with uh, Talk, Tractor and uh, Ragion or, uh, or Grogo and just destroy a bit of HP here and there. Mm-hmm. And let, let's say they haven't gotten it to Sarian yet, you know, with regards to that composition, do you still feel like it, it, it would be a little bit of an issue dealing with Kumun's passive? Or ultimately, do you, you still feel like it, it, can, it can get the job done? Well, you can get the job done. Uh, after all, uh, Kumun will uh, target Ragion if you put him in mm -hmm. and have two waters beside him. And uh, then it's just about shifting on who you destroy HP on. Uh, so it takes a bit more time uh, and it's slightly more risky, but you can do it the same way. Gotcha. Uh, again, there are, of course, better ways to do it if you have, if you're lucky enough to have monsters that counters the team. Like, for example, I would attack it with Anaval Isis and Wusa, but not everyone has that. So, right, right, right. right. So th this is a more uh, farming-friendly way to counter it. Gotcha. Appreciate it. All right. Which is kind of what, what we do. Exactly, exactly here. Now this is this this team on the left here. I actually, I, I mean, I see some speed cons here, but I've never seen Kabila use in this sort of fashion. I think I think though, what, one of the things we wanted to talk about was that second team though, right? Too. Which one did you want to hit up first? Well, it's the same really. Uh, we can say take the first one to the left. Okay. Uh, as with everything else, it's Theomars Chasun plus one. Yeah. Uh, and that one is an attack bar booster, so yeah. same as everything else. You can use that immensity, nuke down Chasun with copper, uh, Ramahan to make sure you go first, as Kabila has very high, uh, high uh, <coughs> base speed. 
or you can go through it with uh, with uh, Talk, Grogo, and Ragion, or Gro- no Tractor or or Ragion, uh, alongside. Uh, no, sorry, uh, Talk, right, uh, right. Tra- a Tractor, and Ragion or Grogo, gotcha. and just take care of the damage that comes from Tessarion. Uh, Kabila tends to be very squishy, so you can kill it fast also if you just want to get rid of it. Gotcha. And the second team here, what, what do you go about? How do you go about countering that with the units that we've talked about early on? You can still copper that. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, okay. It, yeah. It, in this case, you can choose to copper the first one, but if you built the units I have, for example, you can copper that Veramos and, uh, and uh, well, if you have... Uh, if you have built a bulldozer and you have will runes on it, you can uh, copper Veramos or copper Orion and then bulldoze or, uh, uh, your bulldozer the the uh, Kumar. Gotcha. Uh, and you would bu- you would bulldoze the Kumar versus the Veramos? Well, you can do, go either way. Okay. Uh, just kill. Uh, but uh, that's the nuke way. Uh, it's slightly risky if you don't have uh, the runes to make your mm-hmm. your. Uh, your uh, bulldozer hit hard enough. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, so the other way is uh, going with uh, a will rune team that has uh, a shield set. If you want, it's not a must-have, but you you have will runes, water, and a cleanser like Konamiya, Fedora. Uh, say you have Talk, uh, your own Theomars, and uh, and uh, Konamiya or Fedora. Uh, you have defense buff. You have heal. You have cleanse. So whatever whatever they do, it's not really important. Gotcha. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, this looks like a copy. We already kind of talked about that one here. Yeah. Um, uh, this one here is a little bit different, but ultimately, you know, more or less kind of the same here. No attack bar booster, but we got we got the cleansing, we got the defense buff, we got the stuns here. Um, yeah. Anything that would change with this particular one? No, that's the thing. If you have other will runes in place, this is just to show how important it is to have the will runes. Uh, if you have will runes, you can copy the Chessun, uh, and in that way you uh, remove their uh, attack uh, attack uh, power up mm-hmm. from Chessun, which means they won't deal that much damage. Yeah, you can you risk losing your immensity or or your uh, your uh, copper to some bullshit uh, procs, but you can bulldozer the, the Veramos after that and then have uh, two or three against uh, Theomars and you basically won. Gotcha. Uh, apart from that, it's an okay defense if you make it tanky enough. Right on. Uh, so if, if you're able to, uh, then it comes to building a defense, uh, you have to think, what counters my defense and can I make sure that they can't use that counter on both? Right. Good point. Really good point there. Awesome. Um, overall, uh, with regards to every team that we looked at, anything else you kind of wanted to add that you thought of? Uh, there's also, you can go into that specific defense with immunity because they don't have a cleanser. If you have tank immunity monster, for example, Fedora, or if you're lucky enough, Wusa, uh, Vela Jewel, for those who are especially lucky, uh, you can still go in with defense-based units and, and uh, destroy it. Gotcha. Uh, and some people uh, will look at that defense and say, okay, they have a Brucey, uh, Brucey Theomars because they have a HP leader. And uh, if there is a crit rate leader, for example, it could be that they're just lacking crit rate on Theomars to be uh, to be satisfied. Or it could be that they have a damage dealing Veramos as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. But I prefer to go in thinking that they have slightly better runes than me every time, even if they don't. It just gives me the expectation that they will go first. They will be semi tanky and they will be, uh, and they will be uh, dealing some damage. So, yeah, right. I just prefer to go that way. I like it, sir. I like it. What we'll go ahead and do, uh, we're going to be moving on to another topic. But as you guys are listening to this video right now, do me the favor of putting in the comment section down below if you are a mid game player um, looking at specific uh, uh, teams that you currently find in the meta. Put those compositions down below. Myself, as well as Beachex, will be checking on the video every so often so that if you have a particular team that you you constantly see but maybe wasn't showcased in this particular video, uh, we can go ahead and comment down below as far as some of the units that we would utilize in order to counter that, okay? 
Uh, next one up here, uh, what I wanted to go ahead and talk about is the underrated and overlooked rune here. Now, of course, when people hear that uh, particular topic, they've known from previous Educate Nominate videos, we always like to talk about that underrated and overlooked uh, rune uh, that kind of revolves around what we're talking about today. Now, while everyone thinks that it, it is Will, and, and rightfully so, it is an amazing uh, rune out there. We've already talked about it a lot. There's another rune that is has been talked about a little bit briefly here, but, you know, is, is very underrated, at, with and it, and it plays a really good role in this kind of style of playing. So what, what is your what is your rune of choice? That's destroy runes, because uh, if you have violent sets, you, you'll go into who gets the violent procs, who gets the stuns every now and then. But if you have destroy set, then you can just grind them down uh, because they eventually will lose. Right. And so when it comes to the destroy sets here, um, you know, ultimately it definitely does take a long time to get it done. Uh, you, there's some of the units that you've actually recommended going, you know, even double destroy if you if you have the if you have the space to do it. Like so, um, is there any? Is there any? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the thing is, uh, many people will farm dragons and think I can't get the wheel runes. He talks about he wants on every unit and and the destroy runes and everything like that because I can't farm necro. Uh, one of the reasons I believe that come to us made the crafting system like it is is because they wanted newer players to catch up to the late game players uh, through being able to farm. Uh, dragons or giants uh, and get the runes they need uh, in high quality and uh, through that get the crafting materials because they still drop in dragons and, and giants uh, for the others uh, so you can still craft uh, destroy runes and will runes through farming just dragons uh, on my alt uh, Daneslave uh, I've farmed dragons only it doesn't have a, a stable necro team yet uh, and on that, I've managed to craft up some sets of wheel runes for Eladriel, Shingse, and, and stuff like that. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So, yeah, this, it, if, you, if you want better quality runes, you'll want to farm Necro. Uh, and there are many great guides out there for that. Uh, and by all means, look them up. Right. And uh, guys... but, 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 but just to get uh, those base... Uh, just to get uh, those monsters on wheel runes to, be, uh, to begin with, to get that uh, tactical advantage, uh, you can just farm uh, giants or dragons, uh, whatever you want, and get those crafting materials and craft. Right, right. Definitely, definitely. All right. And so when it comes to the skill ward, there's a lot of recommendations that uh, previous Educate Nominate guests, as well as uh, uh, quite a few people in the community, have kind of put out there as far as things that would like to change. Um, with regards to your uh, particular opinion, uh, if there was something to change for the better, for the worse, what would it be and why? I think that free-to-play players or players in general uh, can't experiment as much as we should be able to uh, because of the lack of devil mounts in the game in general. And I think that uh, Guild Wars versus Arena versus whatever we get as RTA rewards uh, I think every one uh, of those should have a Devil Mon weekly. Uh, because as it is now, you won't be skilling up that Nat 4 because you don't have enough Devil Mons if you uh, are pay to win, for example. Uh, and you get a fair few, or you're just lucky and get a fair few Nat 5s. You'll be using every uh, Devil Mon you get through, uh, through Arena weekly and uh, TOA normal and hard on those monsters all the time. And you won't be able to experiment properly with others. So if they increase the numbers of uh, Devil Mons we can get uh, by giving us, say, a Devil Mon for 500 guild points a week, people will be more interested in looking into Guild Wars. Right. And the same thing go comes into RTA if they want us to to really put the effort in and see what we can do there, then, then, uh, yeah, give us rewards we want. Right. And in my opinion, in my opinion, when it comes to skill ups, it's something okay. They earn a lot of money on the Devil Moon packs. There's no denying yeah, it. Uh, they do. And, but we still, those who are pay to win, those who will buy those Devil Moon packs, are those people who, who uh, have a lot of Nat Fives who need skill ups, and those will still need skill ups if you get. Uh, uh, more devil mons uh, through other methods as well. Yep. I like it, sir. I like it. Um, when it comes to uh, this particular series, as you guys know, we have brought a ton of unique people. Almost, I think it's, I think we're sitting at over 75, or sorry, excuse me, 65 unique uh, people 
in about 70 plus videos here over the last two years here. Um, you know, there's been a lot of people coming and going that provide, you know, amazing insight there. If there was a, a particular person that you would want to call out today to possibly the next, uh, be the next educated dominant guest, uh, who would it be and why? I'm a big fan of Vane Solidor. Uh, he, he has extremely good runes, so he'll be able to test out stuff uh, that not everyone can. And uh, uh, tactically, I think he's uh, very, very good. And I, I suspect he has uh, some units he's working on uh, that he hasn't showcased yet. Mm -hmm. And anyone looking to get some insight into uh, how to get the tactical op uh, overhand on your opponent should uh, should look him up on YouTube. Right. Uh, he doesn't like, explain everything, so you won't get it food uh, spoon fed. But uh, just look at what he's doing and and uh, try to understand why is this working, why is this not working. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the cool thing about this. Even though he, he has tons of videos out there that he does in English language or whatnot, the cool thing about the, the, the language of Summoner's War is that it is universal. You can literally watch people look at the strategies, how they um, go about it. And even if they don't talk about it, you can, if you really take a second to kind of dive in and really try to think about what he's trying to do and who he's trying to focus on, you can ultimately see uh, and kind of figure out the strategy at hand. So um, he has a very, very unique uh, team strategy, different composition, and I think his runes allow him to do that. But ultimately, the, the fundamentals is, is still strong. He utilizes a lot of three-star units that we're talking about right now. So if there was one person that really fits the bill uh, in this particular aspect of using some of these uncommon three-star units, I think you did a, you did a good, good justice there. I think he is a, definitely a great candidate. So thank you for that recommendation. Uh, let's see what we got here. So how about the uh, uh, shout-outs here? We, we're pretty much wrapped up with the video. Do you want to give any shout-outs to the community there? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout-out to Zodiac. The guild I'm in. Uh, it's a fantastic guild with tons of fun people. Uh, I was uh, more or less bound to quit uh, the game. Uh, I think it's now a year ago when I joined. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they just made the game fun again. Yep. Uh, apart from that, I'd like to uh, mention and hope that everyone uh, would take some time, some minutes, and talk with their families about organ donation. As uh, whether your stance is against it or for it, I think it's important that your close ones uh, knows your stance on it. And I myself wouldn't be around if it wasn't for uh, someone donating a heart to me. Okay, there you go. Uh, yes, most definitely, we'll have to keep that in my in my mind. There, I appreciate the sharing that personal part of you. Uh, it definitely means a lot to me. And uh, obviously, if you weren't here today, we wouldn't be able to make this an amazing video for <laughs> for everybody out there uh yeah buddy so but real uh, talk here real talk I'm, I'm really grateful that everything worked out for you i'd like to mention one last thing just because we're we've not talked about my way doesn't mean it's my way or the highway there are many valid ways to do guild wars on but this is the one i've found to be the most efficient way uh so uh, whenever i see someone beat something that i myself would say okay that's a bit risky uh, it's more about them actually winning. So, mm -hmm. good job. Yep. Exactly. And the only, no one will be, uh, no one will ever be uh, able to understand everything about every monster and every composition. So we need to talk. We need to share intelligence between us. Alrighty. Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, hey, thank you once again, uh, B Strix, for coming on board and doing this video uh, for you, our two-part video. Um, thank you so much for everything that you do for the community and as well as uh, the my my influ or my content, my everything that you do for my uh, group of people, my community. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for doing your job. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's making uh, come to well, it's making uh, the community a better place. I think uh, I myself have been a big part of uh, of making it a bit toxic earlier because you get tired of, of of things and you end up ranting or stuff like that but but in the end people like you are the ones who take us back from that and, and more into uh, the collective good I appreciate so it. yeah thank you for that and yeah, not a problem sir all right guys so that is it for our two-part episode operation make game guild war edition uh thank you guys so much for tuning in it's a pleasure to make these videos for you as always it's your boy childish and beastrix with childish play chicken out take care and we will see you next time guys we're out <laughs>